Choice Home Care and Hospice present Choices to Benefit the Aging with your host, Joe Yurutia. Welcome to Choices to Benefit the Aging. I'm Joe Rutia, Community Senior Service Coordinator for Choice Hospice and Home Health. Today's guest, we have Donicio Rivera from Mountain Via Nursing Home and Skill Nursing Facility. Welcome to our program, Donicio. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Joe. Donicio, uh, tell us who you are. Yeah, my name is Dionisio Rivera, and I'm the president of the company that owns Mountain Villa Nursing Center, and uh, we I've been the administrator for 17 years until last month when my son became the administrator. So right now I'm just running the corporate. The corporate. Tell us more about Mountain Via. Mountain Via is a small nursing facility and we've been you know, in that location for over 50 years. Uh, we're small. Uh, usually a regular nursing home is about 120 bed. And there are some in El Paso uh, of all the 14 nursing homes, there are some that are over 120. There are also, you know, a few of those that are, you know, uh, below that, and you know, we're just 48 bed facility. Where is Mountain Via located, Donicio? Uh, we're at, located at 2729 Porter. Uh, it's basically south of Beaumont Hospital. Okay. I've been into your facility, and something that you just said right now, being that um, it's a small nursing facility, and it really, and it is, but uh, because it's smaller, I notice that your staff is very warm and. I don't know, there's a nice bond between your nursing staff, skilled nursing staff, and your patients, and I like that about your facility. And it's very homey, by the way. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, being small, uh, there are some disadvantages and advantages on it. Uh, for being small, I think the biggest problem is uh, with regards to the revenue. Uh, if you have fixed costs, uh, you can only spread out that fixed cost, you know, uh, so much because your revenue is based on the number of beds that you have. But being small is also great because you get to know the patient, you get to know the family, and I have staff that have been there 38 years, 25 years, 15 years, and I've been there 17 years, like what I said. So there's you know a really big advantage because we get to know each other. We're a little family you know, in that uh, skilled nursing facility. And, and I see that comfort uh, level that your um, patients, uh, well, your residents and patients have with your um, nursing staff. And it, like I said, it's a very warm uh, facility. I've seen um, uh, even your wife uh, works there at the facility, and she's out there working on the garden, wa um, watering the trees and the, and the flowers. So it's kind of yeah. nice to walk into a, kind of a home-like uh, facility, and it just doesn't feel like a nursing home. Well, you when know? you... Uh, when you work in a place seven, uh, five days a week uh, and you've been doing it for a long time, I, I think, you know, I have come to the position, uh, you know, early on that I spend most of my waking hours in the building. I might as well make it fun. And that's what we have done, you know. Uh, we plant uh, gardens, you know, flowers and vegetables. Uh, over there, we bring out the patients outside, and you know they stay under the sun, and those are just programs that you know we have created and learned over the years. So you know it's it's a home-like setting. And I like that because, I, like I said, I have walked in there, and I I see you guys working on the garden, and, and the patients are sitting down there enjoying the, the the weather, and and plus you have a beautiful view of the mountains there. Mm -hmm. Donicio, I was going to ask you about the healthcare reform, and how is it that you're being affected by this? new health care reform? Well, uh, it's, it's, it's really bad right now. Uh, the government is really uh, having a difficulty trying to uh, figure out wh what to do. Uh, it's just like a runaway train, you know. Uh, the baby boomers uh, is coming. In fact, uh, the first baby boom uh, became 65 years old this year. And uh, if we don't really work in trying to, you know, fix this problem, uh, we're going to have a bigger problem in the future. And what's happening right now is uh, the government is just cutting, you know, uh, services uh, here and there. In uh, 2010, uh, October of 2010, they cut Medicaid cut 3% of our reimbursement. And in February uh, of this year, they cut another 2%. 
And now, uh, Medicare got 11.1% starting October of this year. So there's really a big problem. And you know, we really need to uh, focus on uh, taking care of our elderly and the disabled. And there's you know, uh, a lot of big disconnect between the providers and, and, and the government agencies. You know, you're saying about the baby boomers turning age 65, and I read on uh, one of the articles on Southwest Senior and um, exactly what you were saying that uh, this year it's uh, they're turning 65 at the rate of 10,000 per day mm -hmm. and that's a very big um, an, uh, you know uh, population of seniors turning 65 and you know to see this new health care reform I can see why it's so important so um, go ahead uh, we really need to you know to focus uh, and, and the government need to you know to really focus on trying to uh, resolve that issue. Uh, we have the big deficit in the in the government, and now you know, uh, Medicare and Medicaid is is being affected. So, I think uh, providers like us, you know, home health, uh, skilled nursing facilities, uh, DMEs, uh, hospitals, needed to work together to to resolve this issue. Otherwise, you know, we're going to have a problem, and you know, who's going to be there to help these people if we don't, you know, uh, do our our best to you know to do it right now. Well, it just kind of seems that the nursing home industry and the healthcare industry is in um, a lot of trouble. Is that what you, from what you've researched? Yes. And from your experience? Uh, my, 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 my experience is, uh, you know, the revenue or the reimbursement is really not adequate. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, uh, we're, I, I call it, we're a nickel and dime business. And you know, if we do not do something that would resolve this issue, uh, we're going to have more problem because of the uh, baby boom uh, requiring that care uh, very soon. Um, seems you're painting a bleak pi picture here of the current uh, healthcare system. Um, is there light at the end of the tunnel, or? Uh, yeah, the answer is yes. Uh, the uh, thing that we need to do is, uh, n n number one... Is a fundamental problem in the, in the system itself? It is, it is. And, and uh, let, let me, let me uh, give you a classic example. I attended a meeting Friday last week uh, where they talk about uh, hospitals uh, discharging patients too early. And the government has come up with the regulation that if a patient is readmitted back in the hospital uh, within a 30-day period, they're going to penalize the hospital and possibly even the physicians' uh, fiscal year of 2013. Uh, well, that's, you know, that's a big problem because the DRG, or Diagnostic Related Group, where hospital is being reimbursed, uh, in some you know, instances, that is being abused. Uh, in a way because the patient is being discharged too early and the nursing homes that we have right now are not equipped uh, to service those type, to, of, to service those type of patient. Yes, is it because it's, it's a chronic patient? It's a chronic patient, number one. The structure of the building is, you know, is not conducive you know, for those type of patient. The equipment is not there. The employees are not properly trained. So you know, we really need to wake up you know, and, and, and see where we're at to be able to, you know, uh, resolve that particular issue. And what is, uh, are you preparing for those type of changes, don't you? Well, we have to do it right now. I have seen uh, the hotel industry uh, is uh, doing some, you know, new buildings and the old ones are being renovated. Uh, I think the nursing home industry need to do the same thing. Uh, we need to build new buildings that would meet the need of you know a heavy care patient. Uh, we need to train our staff. We need to bring in equipment so that you know uh, we can take care of them. Otherwise, you know we're we're just gonna be uh, like what had happened in the past. Uh, nursing home, for some reason or another, has had a negative you know uh, history. Anyways, uh, we need to get out of that. And you know the new nursing home right now that we have, uh, I, I think are better equipped to to take care of those heavy care patients. But we need to work together to accomplish that. What is the best option after hospitalization? 
Well, you know, there are several uh, things. Uh, home health is going to be an option. Uh, nursing home is going to be an option. You just look at it that a home health and a nursing home right now got to stand side by side with the hospital, you know, uh, it's just a step down. You know, uh, if we don't consider that, then, you know, where would the patient go? Going home is not the best option, especially if the patient doesn't have any family member or okay. doesn't have any caregiver. So they need to depend. And nursing home is not the end of itself. It's just going to be a transitional, you know, uh, And place. by nursing home, Donis, are you talking about the skilled nursing skilled component? Skilled nursing, yes. Okay, because I want to just let the public know, don't un look at nursing home, what we're talking about, nursing home placement for long term. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the skilled nursing when they, uh, because your facility has the nursing home combined with the skilled nursing, and that's what you're talking about. Yes. Best option is after the hospital is go, go home health skilled. and then go to a skilled nursing facility like yours, which mm -hmm. has a combination of nursing homes. And, yes, yes, and that's correct. Home. Uh, okay. uh, you know, uh, nursing homes is lump sum into, in, into one but the skilled nursing facility is the entity you know which is a part of the regular nursing okay. home uh, where uh, they can take care of the heavy care type patient that is being discharged you know uh, from the hospital lab. like for example a patient that's requiring care uh, and utilizing about fifteen hundred dollars a day of services you know uh, medication equipment you know, the care that, that is needed. And then when they're discharged into the nursing home, the average uh, rate is about $350 and still requires that kind of care. Well, you know, there's a big gap in there and the nursing home is expected to provide the type of care like what they did receive, you know, the day before when they were admitted, it's going to be difficult. So the government has to look at, you know, uh, making adjustment in you know the sub acute or the skilled uh, part to be able to you know take care of this patient and when that patient has you know uh, recuperated then they can go into the long term part okay, or you know or maybe go home uh, or discharge to a assisted living donicio um, explain to me what type of services under at mountain via with the skilled nursing do you provide well we provide uh, IV therapy. Yes, sir. Uh, we do uh, wound care. Uh, we do rehab. We have a contract what with a rehab, rehab company. Physical therapy. Physical therapy, speech therapy, uh, occupational sure. therapy. You know, we do all that. But like what I said, it's an old building. Uh, we're doing the best we can. Uh, but you know, we're able to provide those care. Uh, I wish that you know we have a bigger you know building where. You know, we can have a fancy equipment to, you know, to do all that. But, you know, uh, one of these days, maybe, you know, we More can... More yet to come. <laughs> we can do something. And, yeah. and under your skilled nursing, you can accept patients that are like stroke patients, correct? Yes. If they need some uh, uh, continuous rehab, rehab uh, mm -hmm. and they can get it through your facility, through your physical therapist and occupation. Yes. If they have a, a, an extensive wound that needs uh, a lot of curative measures, you also have the nursing staff to provide that mm -hmm. kind of service, mm -hmm. correct? Uh, it used to be that, you know, uh, when I started in this, you know, industry, uh, the, we send the patient to the hospital to, you know, uh, get treated with the wound. Uh, now it's, it's the other way around. When we admit the patient, the patient has wound and we treat them in the nursing home. So, you know, it, it, you know we're doing a lot better. In, in taking care of those type of patients uh, in, you know, uh, in, in the nursing home. In the nursing home and uh, getting better outcomes also, making sure you get these better, uh, these patients healthier, mm -hmm. quicker, mm -hmm. and in a smart way, I guess. Yes. Right? yes. Um, Donicio, what is the he hesitancy of many people out there about going into one, into a nursing home? And I'm going to ask you also about the skilled nursing, because I, I want to, there's a difference between nursing home and skilled nursing. Tell me about the nursing home hesitancy first. Uh, and then the uh, negative uh, connotation or the stigma that we had with the nursing home uh, is because of where it came from. Uh, it used to be what we call almshouses, you know, uh, old folks home, people, you know, and, and they lump, you know, uh, different kind of a patient in there including the insane you know the incapacitated and all that 
but you know uh, the current nursing home that you see right now is is totally different okay uh, if we look at the long-term uh, section of, of, of a nursing home uh, that is the place for people that don't have a family uh, those that you know uh, will will stay there for for a long time uh, the other part is the skilled part uh, of the nursing home this is the section where person that goes to the hospital and the doctor would say you know you can't go home but you can't stay in the hospital either so you know uh, we need to look at whether you're going to be appropriate for home health or you're going to be appropriate for a nursing home and then you know whatever the you know appropriate uh, placement is uh, if they go to the nursing home that patient can stay there for you know a short period of time and they can get better because if they are receiving therapy in the hospital uh, in order for that patient to qualify and get reimbursement for Medicare, they got to be an intensive, you know, therapy. But you know, uh, healing uh, takes time, so you need time to heal. And you know, therapy in the nursing home is less extensive than in the hospital setting. Therefore, you know, they can get better. And when they get better, you know, we look at you know uh, either, you know, uh, they need either to go home or they can go home with the help of a you know, home health agency. You know, and I want to thank you for um, telling uh, the, differentiating the nursing home and skilled nursing because I get those calls sometimes from family members wanting to know um, what is the difference between a nursing home, and there is, mm -hmm. and, and the skilled mm -hmm. nursing. I tell them the nursing home is a facility, but within the nursing home you have a skill, this, yeah. is a skill setting. So I, I want to thank you uh, for that, um, Benicio. Um, I had my grandmother on, on, I had to put her in skilled nursing when she first got sick and um, it made it easier for her to transition her now into the nursing home and when that happened she was still very alert and I remember going back and I thought okay we're going to go back home and she herself was very cognizant of, uh, and aware of the time and she says you know I don't think it's, I want to go back home and I said you know grandma why don't you want to go back home with me and she goes you know my care level of care has changed. You know, and I'm seeing that the nursing staff here is taking care of all my medications. My, she was diabetic and also going through dialysis. And she says, my level of care has changed. And you're working, and, you know, there's too much for you to worry about me mm -hmm. at the mm -hmm. time. But it really made it easier for me to put her through the skilled nursing because she needed to. She met criteria. And then at that point when the nursing staff came back to me and said, you know, uh, plans for discharge, and we had talked to my grandmother, and she says, no, her best option was just to stay there. And, and just because she herself simply recognized that her level of care required somebody to be with her at the bedside. We uh, had seen Not so much at the bedside, but also somebody that is able to service her, her, um, her health needs, you know, around mm -hmm. the clock. And it made a big difference for me when she made, she just made it very easy for me, Donicio, too. Yeah transition into the nursing home. We have seen that a lot. Uh, we have some patients that come on respite, say two weeks or three weeks, and the intention is, you know, for them just to get better, and then they go home, and they do that. And then, you know, uh, two, three months down the road, you know, they have another episode, and, and then they want to come again, and then, you know, all of a sudden says, uh, can I just stay here? You know, I want to stay here. You know, it's so lonely at home. I'm by myself. You know, that type of thing. In my experience, though, uh, 17 years at Mountain Villa, uh, there are only two that knock at the door and say, admit me. The rest are, you know, being forced to go there, you know, against their will. And, you know, uh, over time, you know, they kind of like it, but, you know, the immediate, you know, impact of, of going over there is, you know, they don't really want to be there. And so it's a big challenge for a nursing home operator even for the staff to make sure that this patient, you know, is, is taken care of. So, you know, you, you'll see a lot of, you know, nice stories. That and and I can tell you that my experience with the nursing home, um, and, and you guys are heavily regulated, not by federal, but also state. Mm -hmm. you know, and you have surveyors coming in, and um, you are heavily re regulated. And, and uh, so you're having to cross your T's and dot your I's and, you know, <laughs> making sure that you have good outcomes and that the patients are being well taken care of. Mm -hmm. And Donisio, with all the changes, the medical, Medicare changes in the system and, and everything that you guys, are, the nursing home industry and healthcare is going through, it seems like there's a madness out there. Is there light at the end of the tunnel? 
Yes, uh, what, what we need to do is, uh, like what I mentioned, let's make, and I think m mainly education uh, with the community and, and with the people, that a nursing home is a setting, a uh, medical setting, uh, that, you know, stand side by side with the hospital. It's not really a care similar to the hospital, but it's a step down. So, you know, if we, if we look at that, uh, I, I think, you know, we, we, we can understand what, what is going on. But still, there's a big disconnect, okay? Uh, and the solution to that is? Yes, well, you know, the, the big disconnect is, uh, I was talking to uh, a doctor uh, last week, mm -hmm. and, and, and he was saying, you know, when a patient is being discharged from the hospital, uh, to the nursing home, if the admitting doctor from the nursing home has not seen that patient in the hospital, and then all of a sudden that night or the following day, uh, the nurse calls the admitting doctor and say, Doc, you know, I have a problem with this patient. If that doctor is not familiar with the care of that patient, then, you know, what is he going to say? Admit the patient back to the hospital. Well, that's the big disconnect. I think what needs to happen is, you know, the, hosp the nursing home has to have a doctor that will, you know, admit that patient and look at the care of that patient immediately upon admission. Otherwise, we're going to, you know, be able to solve that problem. And number two, uh, like what I'm saying, the old uh, buildings of nursing homes need to uh, improve uh, in terms of design, uh, you know, architectural design, uh, in terms of equipment, in terms of staffing, uh, they need to be hiring the best uh, staff and the best trained staff. You know, if we do that, I, I think we don't, we're going to uh, really resolve these big issues that, you know, that we're having right now. So it seems like they're, you're being in, um, looking more into outcomes of the patients, right, that you're restoring them to health. it it got to be, yeah. it, it got to be because, aggressive. you know, uh, the, the patient should be the primary you know, target, and uh, I have problem also with regulators, and they look at, you know, the book, black and white, and they put that patient in a mold, you know, that should not be. Uh, what need to happen is, you know, look at the patient, you know, what is the condition of the patient today, you know, uh, did we miss to, you know, uh, to put a tease on, you know, on, on our books or, or, or something, you know, but, you know, if the patient is doing well, you know, let him be, you know, uh, get you got to be a patient-centered care. You know, the patient should come first. Yeah, and you're talking more on the holistic um, part here uh, that you want to start integrating the psychosocial part of a patient and, uh, mm -hmm. that you said earlier about holistically looking, not, not mind, body, and spirit. Am, am I, is that yes. okay to yes. say? Yes, yeah. Uh, in our website, uh, we talk about, you know, not only medical and physical, we talk about the social, the emotional, intellectual, and the spiritual aspect of the person. All of that has to be taken care of. If we don't, you know, we, we really, you know, have not met, you know, the need of the patient. But, you know, the regulation is written to where, you know, this is a medical facility and those are, those that's the only thing that we need to provide. But we need to go beyond that because, you know, it involves the emotion of that person. It involves, you know, uh, the whole holistic, the whole picture, holistic picture of, of the of patient. And, you know, I'm glad that you're saying that because if you really look into hospice, um, that's the, those are the three things that we look into a terminal patient and the family. And mm -hmm. we look at the, like you said, you have to treat the body, mind, and the spirit, exactly. and the spiritual, and the emotion of the body. And to be able to talk to someone now in the healthcare industry outside of hospice to be in that same mind frame that that's the way we should go is it um i hope it does go into the future it, of, you know, of meeting those needs of, of the client it's a lot patients. of education you know we're we're going to move to a different direction you know it's not just you know uh physical body it's it's not just that and you know already in the nursing home because you also have hospice in your facilities mm -hmm. and you're already bringing that aspect into your facility because with hospice that, they, that's what they integrate into your patients is the mind body spirit you know having the chaplain and you already have that in your facility as, as, as we speak right because mm -hmm. you have a different hospices going there um Denise, i was going to ask you um give me a sample of what a new building should look like in in the new nursing home skill nursing model the nursing home industry is uh, advocating 
uh, what they call right now the small house design. Uh, the 120 bed, like what I told you, the average nursing home, is usually set up either in a uh, K-type or, you know, uh, separated into two distinct, you know, nurse stations. Uh, El, you know, Mountain Villa uh, is, is a small uh, nursing facility, and when they start talking about, you know, small house design, we are that already because we're just 48 bed. You know, we're very small. Uh, that's number one. Number two, you know, we need to separate, you know, different kinds of patients, their needs, their attitudes, their care, you know, the type of thing, you know, there has to be, you know, a separation because you can't mix them all up in, you know, in, in, in one setting. What is a, the, another one that you can tell me that two things that you want out there for the new model to look, that it's going to, for, if yeah. I myself am looking for a nursing home for my family, what are two things that you want a, a family to look for? Uh, you know, the... Number one is the care, of course, uh, okay. and, and, and we cannot discount that because even with the limitation of my building, you know, we provide, you know, the best the care, you know, and when I get referral from patients, you know, that are coming from a fancy, you know, nursing home, you know, it tickles me to death. But, you know, we have some limitations and, you know, uh, like for example, we did a renovation in one of our bathroom or shower one day, and you know my staff were so happy. Uh, I'm talking about my maintenance guys who were so happy that you know uh, they did a very good job. But when we finished that, and the staff, you know, nurses said starting to use the you know uh, the, the shower, uh, they called me and says, you know, we wish that you know the control of the you know water control should have been on the other side so you know we, we learned that and uh, most of the nursing homes that you see right now are built by builders you know they're not built by uh, the caregivers or the providers so we need to involve you know the staff, the staff in, to in, 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 in doing make those the recommendations. Mm -hmm. Donisa we're running short on time and, and uh, I wish I could um, I'm gonna invite you again to another program because there's a lot for you and I to talk about okay. the nursing home and skilled nursing. Donisa I want to Thank you for being in, uh, today on uh, Choices to Benefit the Aging. If anybody would like to visit Mountain Villa uh, mm -hmm. Nursing Home Skill Nursing Facility, they're more than welcome to yes. go to your facility, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. And yeah. get a tour. 2729 Porter. Where, what is the address? 2729 Porter. 2729 Porter. And if uh, it's off of Alabama. Alabama uh, and, and Piedras. And Piedras, kind of an in-between thing. Mm -hmm. So, Donicio, we God bless you and we thank you. Joe, thank you very much for the invitation, and I really appreciate this. And, you know, if there's any question uh, regarding nursing home or, or anything, uh, they can call you. you know, they can call us. and we'll What is your number? 566-2111. 566-2111, please, if you have any questions about nursing home criteria or would you like to visit uh, Mountain Via Nursing Home, please feel free to um, call them and, or just drive by there and uh, visit mm -hmm. the facility. Thank you, Donicio. Thank you. I want to thank everyone for watching us today on Choices to Benefit the Aging. Please look at your Southwest Senior Program um, newspaper out there for lo uh, listings of our pro weekly program um, listings about uh, we bring on physicians to talk about different healthcare issues and healthcare providers out there. I want to also thank uh, Copenhagen for um, uh, allowing us to um, use their furniture here on uh, Choices to Benefit the Aging. I would also like to ask the public if you have any donations that um, you would like to um, uh, uh, provide to uh, send to KSCE. Uh, please send your donations. We are more than welcome to receive them, and uh, you can send them to uh, KSCE at 2201 East Wyoming Avenue, El Paso, Texas, 79903. And this station is a non-commercial and non-profit, and it is tax deductible. God bless you, and thank you for watching us today. Good day. Choices to Benefit the Aging has been brought to you by Choice Home Care and Hospice. For more information on this program, go to El Paso Southwest Senior Magazine at www.southwestsenior.com. Furniture provided by Copenhagen, 6550 North Mesa.